Hello everyone, it's Roman Kish from Paragon Tube, and today we're going to bring you a set review of the new Shining Legends mini set. Uh, Kish, if you want to explain exactly what the set is. Yeah, so as you said, it's a mini set. It's the set between Crimson Invasion and Burning Shadows. So this set is comprised of 73 cards, and once you include the hyper rares and things, I think it goes up to 78 cards. And the curious thing about this set is that you can't buy a booster box of it. So all the packs come from elite trainer boxes or premium collections. So it makes it pretty hard for the average player to get hold of these cards. So singles is where it's at, guys. Yeah, and so is it a bit like the double crisis set? You know, that with the team Magma and Aqua is a bit like that? Yeah, it's like that. It's like Dragon Vault. So we've... We've had a few of these before, but maybe not one as impactful as this set. When I say impactful, it means sort of maybe not one with as many playable cards. Uh, so a lot, those mini sets in the past have largely largely been ignored, but this one's seeing a bit of a bit of hype, uh, if not for the throwback feeling of having the shining cards re-enter Pokemon. We haven't seen this since the Neo Neo set. Yeah, definitely. And also, I mean, just in terms of number of cards, yeah. there's so many in this set. You know, even, say, Double Crisis only had, what, about 40? Yeah. If I remember correctly. That's but right. here we've got, yeah, upwards of 70. So, um, yeah, lots of interesting sort of cards, and which we'll run through. Um, do we want to just start from the top? I know it's, it's a bit messy because we're, we're dealing with the Poker Beach uh, scans here. Yep. But it's not uh, in, in any particular order, but we'll start with good old Shining ho -Oh, And we can enlarge that. So, yeah, what are your thoughts on this, Kish? Uh, I think this is a great looking card. <laughs> this card is amazing. I, must, I don't really like that thumb in the corner. Yeah. I, I, I could have done without that, I think. Yeah. But, you know, they're going for that realistic full art effect. Yeah, the misprint um, thumb. It, it jumps out of the page at you. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, no, I agree. It looks, yeah. Yeah, I think you, you get this with the Elite Trainer Box. Uh, so you're guaranteed one of these if you buy an Elite Trainer Box. It has got a classic Ho -Oh attack, a ridiculous <laughs> amount of energy for a very low payoff. Um, and Golden Wing is a cool ability, but this is purely for the collectors. This is never going to see play. Interesting, because I, I think it's the ability that's the classic Ho-Oh ability. Ho-Oh always that's has these energy-preserving kind of... Yeah. Back in the day, the poker powers, if you remember that secret wonders Ho-Oh, yeah. kind of like this in a way. Yeah. Um, well, it's interesting. I mean, I, think, I don't think it'll see much play, but even though it's a really big, expensive attack, and as you say, for not much payoff, hmm. um, if you're able to get that ability off every every time it gets knocked out, and remember in standard, there's no way of removing abilities yep. like Hex Maniac unexpectedly. It's, it's predictable with Garbodor. So, mm -hmm. you know, if, you should be able to activate that ability ideally every time you get knocked out. And, and really, you only need to replace two energies every ho -Oh. And actually, you could do that with the double cults because yep. of the energy requirements. So theoretically, you could power up ho -Oh is just with the DCE mm -hmm. just over and over again because of the ability. Uh, the question is, how are you going to make that damage output more impactful? Yeah. Uh, and you could use things like Volcanion EX. You know, maybe you could have a, a deck that's focused around just attacking with Shining ho -Oh <laughs> and um, Volcanion EX to, to, you know, augment the damage output a bit. Yeah. I, I, this isn't going to see play in existing fire decks because unless you're playing double colors, it's not, it doesn't really give you that many efficiency benefits because then yeah. you, you have to power it up for two fire each time and that's not mm -hmm. efficient. But if, if you, Theoretically, if you have a deck, sorry, if you had a deck focused around attacking with it, you know you only need a double colors for each one, and, yeah. and it's got 130 HP. It only gives up one prize. Maybe it can just out trade decks uh, to a win. And of course, the problem is that when you power to power up your first Ho, -Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's when you need the four energy. So yeah. you're probably not going to be that quick, and therefore you're probably going to be inferior to, to the other five variants. But yeah. I don't know. I think it's an interesting card. It's, it's, it's actually not. I think it's probably slightly better than it looks just because of the Volcanion EX support. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I, I don't think it's going to yeah set, set the world on fire. But um, Nice, yeah. nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the rainbow Pokemon, but it's actually, it's all gold. There's no, yeah. there's no rainbow there, but no, I, I agree. It looks like a sick card. Um, so what have we got next? Okay, so we'll go, we'll keep working our way down. Shining Arceus. Apologies because uh, you're going to have to read this one on an angle. Uh, yeah, so it's got an interesting ability and an expensive attack. <laughs> what do you reckon? Uh, I haven't actually looked too hard at Shining Arceus. Yeah, but well, you uh, have to look quite hard at it to actually <laughs> read the text. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, now's, now's the time to start. Yeah, I mean, this is plastic, pretty classic Arceus, isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah. I don't really see this working into any decks no, anytime it's, soon. No, <laughs> The, the attack cost is way too expensive. Yeah. I mean, two double colors, but then the problem is you can't actually accelerate double colors because uh, obviously you can't max elixir it, so you need to attach manually twice with an energy that you can only play four of, so that doesn't really quite work. Um, 
and 30 spread is is pretty good but it's not what it used to be and yeah uh, i mean the ability is interesting but there aren't really many snipe decks and yeah like, Especially your opponent would just want to knock out the Arceus with all the energy on it, so they probably yeah. wouldn't want to target Danny Bench anyway. Yeah, especially when you got Tapu Koko doing 20 to everything for a DCE. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, this doesn't really... Uh, yeah, I don't know, it's nice to have Arceus, but uh, that's about it as far as God Pokemon go. Pretty weird. Yeah, well, it's probably not going to get uh, too much more useful with yeah. Shining Volcano. This looks, again, in the, in the theme of things, looks really cool. Mm-hmm. I just noticed something. These arts are all different. Are they? That's that's why this person's holding up. Unless the lighting's different for them. Wait, let's let's go back here. We're gonna do some investigative work. Uh, <laughs> all right, for Ho-Oh. So there are two. This person's got two pictures of Ho-Oh. Okay, let's start from start. Ho-Oh number one. Let's all look at this Ho-Oh. No, it's just now. The let's all look at this. Now is, is that? Oh right, this is just. Uh, also, yeah, even I these think, shining cards have. Yeah, I think it's okay, just so, a holographic mm, pattern. Okay, so why is this person holding up like eight of them though? That's what I know. Um, but see, look, look at see, look at the Arceus that's fourth from the left, and look at the Arceus on the fo- on the right. See, they look at totally different colors. Maybe there's lots of different colors. More than just two. <laughs> Maybe we need to get to the bottom of this. Whoa, it's possible. This is uh, doubt it. Look, let's, okay, the Volcanion. Yeah, look that. Uh, is it just me or yeah? I... No, they do look different. That's yeah. True. The two on the end look similar to the two in the middle. I mean, look different to the two in the middle. You look different to, yeah. But do you think that the two in the middle look the same as each other and the two on the end look the same as each other? Or do you think there's four Uh, different ones? I don't know. On the one on the end on the left, you can see this bluish tinge, uh, which... So it's sort of like... Oh, yeah, yeah. That's sort of similar to the one in the middle. Yeah, So I think it's just the lighting, just the holographic. Okay. So there's at least two... We, we know pretty much for sure that, unless our eyes are extremely deceiving us, but there's at least two different types. Yeah. Uh, and then the question is, are there more than two different types? Because well, they've done this before with those, you know, Vervillian. Remember that one that had, like... Yeah. That, the, the butterfly one. It had, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, about, like, six different arts uh, all in different regions. It's yeah. pretty, pretty neat. I wonder if they've done the same thing here. But, um, yeah, well, in terms of the actual card itself, <laughs> there's not much to speak of. Yeah. Jewel Pump. Uh, as Jason Klusinski once said, nothing beats a jewel splash. Yeah. And uh, let that maybe does that apply to Jewel Pump? It probably doesn't. But, well, uh, I guess he also you could... said that in 2008, so it yeah. probably doesn't transfer to yeah, 2017. Doesn't, but, uh, um, hasn't stood the yes. test of time. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, not a timeless quote. Yeah. That was a very a quote that was very much applicable to its time. Yeah, uh, 50 to two for the three water energy. I mean, maybe in like water box decks, if if there's a if there's a deck in the format that has like. 50 HP basics yeah. that the water box deck would otherwise struggle with. Maybe yeah. it's like a sort of a niche way of dealing with that, but yeah. um, that damage would have to be very much catered towards beating something specific uh, because there's a general rule. Yeah, you know, it's it's not a particularly good damage output. No, I can I can definitely see this deck having fe- this card having featured on Bad Deck Monday back in the day. <laughs> I mean, quad smash, flip four coins, 50 for each heads. Of course, yeah. Well, we've got Victini now, so I yeah. mean, really. That's a guaranteed 200 damage every time you attack. So it's actually, a, it's you know, a water some... type. You can power it up with Aqua Patch, Max Elixir, Double Colorless Energy. So you got acceleration to well, use actually, yeah, this attack. I suppose that's a good point. I mean, maybe... Look, I mean, maybe sort of you look at your pump and you say, okay, three energy for what is essentially 100 damage. That's yeah. very good. But, I mean, when you've got Aqua Patch and Max Elixir, it's, it's less about the... I mean, it's, it really is less about the attack cost. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it's look, a one I mean, prize think, Pokemon, yeah. so who knows? Yeah, it is 130 HP as well, but yeah. I think it w- there would be decks in the format that would have to have, like, 50 HP basics. Yeah. It's interesting, though, because at the moment, we actually have the complete opposite of that. Every basic seemingly has, like, 60 or 70 yeah. HP. I mean, think about Ralts, Remoraid, yeah. Grubbin, mm-hmm. um, Beldum. You know, they all have... All the all the basics that evolve yeah. um, pretty much have... Was it, what does Eevee have? Eevee, uh, I think... Eevee has have, 60 I even mean, EVS sixty, yeah. yeah. So you can't even uh, Trubbish has seventy, yeah, yeah. So this isn't really going to snipe. No. Um, I can't think of like any fifty HP basics. No. Like, the, the power creep is real. Yeah, but it, it could just be used to just set up future knockouts with Quad Smash. You chuck a Choice Band on there, like you can you can ramp a bit. So who knows? Bad Deck Monday. It's yeah. it's finding its way, or or, or some uh, other weekday derivative. Yeah. Of Bad Deck Monday. <laughs> yeah. Um, Shining Mew. Yeah. Well, we've really uh, lost it on the HP front. 
Yeah. And on the uh, readability front as well. Yeah. <laughs> I think this this picture was actually taken on a potato, but yeah. um, bear with us. So I think it's Again, says, yeah. yeah, it's 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 one attack legendary guidance. That's what you're using it for. Search your deck. Oh, here for we go. Two. Sorry, here's a more here's a yeah. more readable. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Search your deck for two energy cards and uh, attach them to to uh, your Pokemon in any way you like. So that's a really powerful attack. Actually, it says two energy cards. So uh, oh yeah, so you it can does. attach that special energy anything. from the deck. Uh, to mm. one of your Pokemon, so that's a ridiculously strong attack. Pity that Shining Mew only has thirty hit points, but <laughs> uh, you know it could it could find its way into some archetype somewhere down the road, uh, if not, uh, well maybe not in the moment because it's so weak. And you're attaching, you have to use Psychic Energy, which is the other bad thing. So you need to be playing something with Rainbow or Psychic. Yeah, so, yeah. So uh, that's really r- restricting the uh, playability of this card but who knows i mean it's a great attack so the, the only downside i see is you're using an energy to get two energies so unless you're attaching like double energy because you, you're expecting the mute to get knocked out right so, yeah yeah uh, you're not really that far ahead um unless you're attaching double energy like the counter energy or the double colorless or something like that uh so i don't know that's what i think of the card i think it's pretty cool but too weak yeah, I think it's also something to know is probably it's also got that furry trait. Yeah. So in decks that could make use of it, it could be kind of used in the same way Tapu Coco is. It's yeah. a free retreater that you can use. So you can use Guzmas more easily. And That's right. You can promote after a knockout. So it's got that nice little effect. Yeah. But as you, as you said, you, you've got to really be getting mileage out of the energies yeah. in particular. But there might be decks that really have nothing better to do like yeah. on the first turn if, if they go first or yeah. or even like turn and two going first. But yeah. it, sorry. Turn, turn one going second, yeah. turn one going first. But um, yeah, look, I, I, as you say, I agree. I think the decks are going to need to abuse special energy. Um, but I mean, maybe there are some decks that use basic energy that... Okay, it's a two-for-one trade, but I suppose, you know, that's still positive. Yeah, it's still positive. Um, and with the XP share, you could even conserve the energy that was yeah. on from the Mew knocked out. So yeah, I think it's... But as you say, I mean, Psychic, it's pretty much got to be a Psychic or, or Rainbow deck, which yeah. limits its its usage. I, it's one of those things that... It's going to be amazing in the, in the decks that can use it, probably. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's not going to. It's not a generally kind of widespread card. But yeah, uh, yeah it's it's a neat card, and I think uh, this this tops so far. We're going to have a running count, but I think this is now my favorite artwork. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, I'll have to think about that. But we'll, we'll do our review at the it's end. It's pretty nice. It's, it's it looks pretty, pretty nice. sick. I think we can all agree. Um, um, but yeah, I guess the last yeah. thing I'll say about it is that most decks are using Vulpix right now. To beacon a whole bunch of times to get their setup, so you might actually have time to use Muse Attack uh, to actually get some energy into play, or at least force your opponent to throw out a Lele and try and knock it out or something. So yeah, and, yeah, absolutely. And yeah. if you can get off two legendary guidances yeah. with the one Mew, I mean that's a huge win. Yeah. Um, it's like imagine a deck that plays a Lolan Bulpix and they go first. Yeah. On your first yeah. turn, you get off a, an attack with Mew then they beacon on their second turn, and yeah. then you get off another one. Um, yeah. Of course, the problem is that, on Mike Volpix, you need an energy for the attack. Yeah, so if right. you start with something and you can't retreat for free, then you're actually yeah. not going to be able to use the attack. So uh, I think, yeah, that's going to be another thing that he mm. that, I think. But uh, it's something to something to keep out for. Possibly I'm not getting creative enough. I can't quite think of a usage for it right now, but... No, um, and I think that's a pretty common got, theme uh, for this set. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, actually, no, I, I, think, well, I think we'll get... Uh, yeah, I think we'll absolutely get to that, thinking, yeah, this is... As an interesting, um, yeah, sort of, it's an interesting card, but can't see an immediate application. But hey, that's what uh, that's what rewards creativity, I think. Uh, now for the antithesis of creativity, here's a card that's basically just a carbon copy of <laughs> the, the good old uh, was it Dragon Vault? Yeah, yeah, the old. Yeah, well, it was in Dragon Vault, and that was in another set, I think. Um, yeah. Ah, uh, I think it was. It was it wasn't. No, it was in Legendary Treasures. Um, it was no, it was printed before that even. Uh, I think it was reprinted in Legendary uh, Treasures. Yes. But it's, there was it's originally a shiny in, version. Um, yeah, well, I think the shiny version was Dragon in Dragon Vault. Vault. But what then there was, was like a regular version that was in... Um, uh, oh, maybe I'm misremembering. But uh, yeah, I think it was also printed in mm-hmm. Legendary Treasures. But yes, this is very, very similar to that. That good old Dragon Pulse attack. Shoot, is there a better scan of this? Uh, maybe this one's better. Mm, not really um, <laughs> yeah the good old 1 for 40 and the good old discarding 2 cards off the top of your deck you never know what you're going to hit with that uh, but I think I mean the, the reason that card was played and also, I should be clear the second attack is not the same right Sky Ju- Judgment is actually a very different attack yeah uh, 4 for 190 discarding 3 energy as opposed to 
was it shred three yeah, for shred. ninety and don't, you know not affected by any uh, other sort of effects. Yeah, it was kind of like a it was used as a counter in the mirror. Mm-hmm. So Rails used it, uh, or even things like Raybor because because it, it was a dragon Pokemon. A dragon Pokemon will wait to dragon. Yep. Um, and sort of the idea is you'd use it to counter opposing Rayquaza EXs mm-hmm. uh, and even oppo- opponents other non EX Rayquazas. Um, yeah, and Dragon Pulse could like knock out things like Tarnamo's early on, but I don't think we'll see. Also, awesome. we're not going to see this card used at all. Um, yeah, probably not much to say unless you've got something that's uh, uh, bad. Nope. Discarding two cards off the top of your deck for 40 damage is pretty bad. <laughs> it, is quite pl- it is quite bad, I agree. Yeah. Especially um, with Garbodor and No VS Seeker, and yeah, it's just. Good. Yeah, that's bad. Uh, Jirachi. Okay, this is a more legible. Uh, this is a more legible yeah. picture. So yeah, it's it's a kind of a weird attack actually because you sort of look at it and you go, okay, all all evolution cards like where would where would that be used? And I mm-hmm. suppose, I mean, on the one hand, it's sort of a discount Espeon X because it only affects the active, <laughs> yeah. but um, it, it, it's a premium Espeon X yeah. in the other sense in that you just you can so not discard you are. Uh, you get rid of all the evolution cards. Yep. So, because one of one of the things that about Espeon is that it's it's a lot more effective if your opponent's been say if they're playing a stage two deck, mm-hmm. they've rare candy to their Pokemon. If they've rare candy to Gardevoir or Gallade or or Metagross, it's better than if they have that stage one because yeah. you don't need to do as much damage. Whereas here, it doesn't matter. They could have evolved manually all the way, and and you can still yeah. just evolve it right down to the Beldum or Ralts or, or whatever. Exactly. Although, admittedly, the HP jump between say Ralts and Curlier isn't actually that much, so mm-hmm. you, you're actually not you're getting some damage. Well, and also. Yeah. You're, you're actually doing 10 yeah, damage do 10. Which, which means with choice band you're actually doing 40 so yeah. um, actually it's, it's yeah pretty, that's, that's not interesting bad. So you only need to spread a bit of damage Yeah. so say for instance you're playing yeah say you're playing uh, actually Metagross is kind of weird because that's resistant to Psychic but but say you're playing um, yeah like Gardevoir hmm. um, you only need to do 20 damage to their Gardevoirs yeah. say for the a Tapu Coco spread you do 20 to everything hmm. Then with this, with a choice band, you're hitting for 40. Yeah. Uh, and it doesn't matter the way that they evolved to Gardevoir, it's always going to be pushed down to the Rolt stage and yeah. you're going to get a knockout. So, um, yeah, it, it, it might see some play. Again, the problem is it's psychic, means that maybe it's going to see some play in um, those like Garbodor spread deck sort of things. Or, yeah. I don't know. Okay, I'm not feeling particularly with... creative today, but yeah. uh, you can probably think of some ways of using it. Actually, the other thing I want to add is how does it work with Greninja breaks that have been evolved from Frogadiers or anything that's been evolved from a Frogadier? What actually happens there? Uh, yeah, that's a really good question because Frogadier is an evolved Pokemon. Yeah. No. So or, it wait. probably would put. No, no. Frogadier is an evolution Pokemon. It's not an evolved Pokemon because it has. An well, evolved. this one just says putting all of the evolution cards to your opponent's hand. No, not evolved yeah, cards. It's, it's... Yeah, but. Uh, oh no sorry is this uh wait if your opponent's active pokemon is an evolved pokemon devolve it by right so you're saying that if there was just a frogadier that hadn't evolved yeah. you couldn't use no. it, it wouldn't the effect wouldn't but if it was what if it had evolved to a greninja would it just go back to frogadier or would the whole thing go back in the hand uh i'm guessing it would go back to frogadier <laughs> where's pokepop when, you, when <laughs> yeah. you need it i'm sure there's been a ruling on this actually yeah uh yeah, please let us know if there's been a ruling or putting all. We could yeah. do a sneaky Google search now, but uh, yeah. yeah, we've probably got other things to talk about. But but yeah, no. That, well, if it worked that way, that'd actually be a very interesting tech against yeah. Greninja, uh, because then you could just discard their entire Greninja breaks just off, just get completely. <laughs> oh, sorry, not discard. Put it back. The whole thing back into their head. Yeah. Uh, it'd be kind of weird, but actually, now that I think about it, probably not even that good because you're not actually taking knockouts. Yeah. <laughs> You've got 70 HP, but. Yeah. Yeah, poss- possibly it can be seen in, in sort of spread decks. Mm-hmm. And with Choice Band, you're doing 40 damage, so that can be enough to get you over the line and get these knockouts. But um, an interesting card. Another interesting card is this Shining Genesect, which <laughs> does not increase in size when you click on it <laughs> that much. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, I actually quite like this card. It's got a cool ability, Energy Reload. So when, once during your turn, you may move a Grass Energy from one of your Pokemon to this Pokemon. So... It's and it's Gaia Blaster attack, fifty damage plus twenty more for each grass energy. So this is like a carbon copy of Flareon. Energy reload is like flare effect but for grass. And Gaia Blaster yep. is like whatever Flareon's attack's called. I don't know. Um so Blaze Ball, that's it. Um so yeah, so but it's a one prize attack, hundred and thirty hit points. Uh I don't actually know how useful this is. Um well, let's quickly get to the other Pokemon which you would play alongside this Venusaur. Good old Venusaur. Yeah. 
So I'm pretty sure, I mean, you'd almost want, always want to be playing, well, you have to make a dedicated Genesec Venusaur deck on its own, I'd imagine. I, I don't think Genesec would really work on its own. Um, well, you, you could, could throw use, it into, you like, Vicaboli like, decks, but... You could play uh, it with the Verizian in this set. It oh, won't be as good, the, uh, but it's, uh, yeah, anyway, oh, continue, is, continue on. Yeah, sorry, well, Venusaur, good old Venusaur, as you can see there, Jungle Totem. Uh, we've seen this ability... I think this exact ability uh, in Poker Buddy form, that good old Sceptar from Great Encounters. Yep. So each, each basic grass energy attached to your Pokemon provides two grass energy. Uh, unfortunately, that doesn't stack. Now, that would be pretty entertaining if it stacked. <laughs> um, <laughs> imagine having like two Venusaurs in yep. play, each grass is four. Ah, oh, mouthwatering. But uh, unfortunately, that's not how it works. But, but still, two energy, I think. The question is could you make it? Because this would be a dedicated Genesec Venusaur yep. deck. Uh, the question is how viable would that be? Um, obviously it's got a lot of problems with it it's ability reliance mm. uh, it's probably pretty clunky but I think the thing it has going for it is just that it's one of the very few decks in the format well it would be one of the few decks in the format that has a just a one prize attacker because I think we've, we've seen a real Darth of that recently mm -hmm. because you know we've lost Bespiquen from the format and, and Gyarados like those two big heavy hitting um, decks that can just trade and, and be one prize attackers we don't really have a deck like that anymore in the format you know there are some there are some good sort of they're more niche one prize attackers like you know Vicar Baller can play Mew and Volcanion has the basic so there's Baby Volk but yep. unless I'm completely forgetting something there isn't well I suppose there's Greninja I guess but that's sort of a bit of a different style yeah. of deck um, yeah so I mean this could sort of see play as kind of um, yeah I think something that's obviously it's not going to be as efficient as say decks like Vespican and Gyarados were but a deck that can just grind out um, sort of wins by yeah. trading prizes optimally and, and one way that you can really make use of the ability I think of um, of Genesect is playing EXP share mm -hmm. so you can just attach EXP shares to, to Pokemon on your bench and um, and then you can just move the energies that you've saved from those to mm -hmm. the Genesects and it means that you don't have to attach the EXP shares to the Genesects themselves so you can still use Choice Band or Finding Fury Belt or, or what have you so I mean in terms of how many energy you need to do a yeah. lot of damage with this um, say for instance if you've got Venusaur in play two energy mm -hmm. on a shining genesect will do 130 damage base mm -hmm. and considering you've got max elixirs as well yeah uh, you've got max elixirs regular attacks and you've got the ability which you can use to pick up yeah say exp shared yeah. energy or just other energy you have lying around yeah you know, i think it's pretty reasonable yeah you can be hitting for 130 damage pretty easily another energy and you're going to 170 and that's a really good number mm -hmm. 170 with even fighting fury bolt that does uh, 180 or 200 with a choice band you know you're doing some good damage there i yeah. think um, weakness to grass is actually sorry weakness to fire is a bit of a concern because it means baby Volk can, can knock you out yep. um, so you lose that kind of trading ability until you run your opponent out of baby Volks but yeah so it, look the question is is it too clunky um, I think but, I think yeah. you're, you're right in that you'd have to bolster it with Max Luxor so you're not solely reliant on your Venusaurs you can still yeah. do things even if your abilities are offline uh, because of Garbatoxin or you just can't find your Venus or so uh, it's definitely a tier 3 sort of thing but who knows uh, someone might actually come up with a decent build which is pretty consistent and uh, can, can get going pretty quickly but it's got yeah. potential well it's interesting I, I, I wouldn't have necessarily thought it's interesting that you raise it I wouldn't have necessarily thought that um, Max Elixir and Venus are, uh, are substitutes I would have thought that they're complements because um, an energy that you get off Max Elixir is worth more when you have Venus yeah no no that's what, I, that's what I mean yeah. that, oh, right, but like yeah. as in like uh, you'd still need to play Max Elixir in the deck uh, while you're gearing up your Venusaur or in case you can't find yeah, uh, those yeah. energies. So, it's good when you don't yeah. have it, but um, it's still absolutely good yeah, when you, you have can't Venusaur. Do anything. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so, and also a note on the art looks very much like uh, that good old Shining Kabutops mm. from, uh, I can't remember what set it was, but it was a long time ago. Um, yeah, one of the Neo sets. Yeah, I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't come up with that comparison. I've still got own. that card, I, so... <laughs> so, if, if you want it ask Kish for it he's going to sell it to you at a very reasonable <laughs> price I'm sure no I will not it will be a very unreasonable <laughs> so, solid, solid price solid 20% markup yeah uh, teen tea prices converted <laughs> um, yeah but good to see that they're sort of paying homage to these old uh, old arts and basic energy I think we should touch on these look pretty cool I think <laughs> apparently these are a little bit different to the existing well you, you can read it yeah. uh yeah, this set's reverse hollow basic energy feature a glossier finish mm. than usual. Similar to ones you get in Battle Arena decks. Yep. I, I don't know what they're referring to with the Battle Arena decks, but I'll take their word for it. Um, uh, but look at this. Who wouldn't want to play with this psychic energy 
or this water energy. Yeah. Like that that's the pinnacle of I wonder how much how expensive these will be. What do you reckon? <laughs> uh, I wanna get my deck blinked out. How much is it, is it gonna cost me? Who knows? Who knows? I don't know. There's there are a lot of shiny energy around these days, probably not that much. We'll yeah, see. exactly. There's a lot of sort of cannibalization yeah. with that. I think people can only handle so much, but mm-hmm. well, I'll be snapping them up. <laughs> uh, I can tell you that much. But oh, on to the GXs. So this is, uh, this is where it gets pretty heavy, I think. Mm. Um, uh, do we have a good picture of... Oh, we'll start with Zoroark. Mm-hmm. Um, All right. Boy, um, okay, if you can make out what's going on here, you're, you're doing pretty well. Um, yeah, so uh, I'll just... Uh, Zoroark's ability is called... Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, I think it's called... I don't know what the English is. Trade. Is exchange? Trade. 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 So once you're in your turn, before you attack, you may discard a card from your hand and draw two cards. Uh, it's a first attack for double colors 20 times the amount of Pokemon you have in play and a GX attack for a two darks choose one of your opponent's Pokemon's attacks and use it as this attack so you can actually choose any of their attacks of any of their Pokemon on the field so yeah uh, Roland you can go ahead and talk about this one if you like yeah yeah so it's an interesting sort of card um, obviously you've got to consider that we have the other Zorak in mm-hmm. the format so the the, uh, the one prize Zorak and and Dark Break, of course, as well. So you've got some versatility there. I mean, I think in and of itself, it's not a world beating sort of card. A Trickster GX isn't actually probably as good as it seems mm-hmm. initially. I mean, putting two Dark on a Pokemon is actually not that convenient in the first place. Because, um, mm-hmm. of course, I mean, the strength of this Zorak and the other Zorak is you just need a double colors to yep. attack with it. And, okay, you're still going to play Dark Energy in the deck, but Zorak Break is the one that uses Dark, and that only uses one Dark. So Trickster GX, I don't think is. Well, for starters, Zorak Break. <laughs> does what Trickster GX does but it does it for the active but mm-hmm. I think that's the most relevant one the Pokemon yeah. that's in the active is probably going to be the one that has the big attack that you want to copy I mm-hmm. think rarely is it going to be a Pokemon on your opponent's bench I can't really think of yeah a case where you'd really there's, there's a deck where it's a Pokemon on the bench that has the attack that you really want to copy uh, so I'm not a huge fan of of this I suppose it means you can guzmer up something and then mm-hmm. use the attack of what was attacking you so yeah. you've got this big attacker that's you know getting knocked out and you just want to knock out a Lele so you you know Guzmer up the Lele and then use Trickster uh, to copy oh, yeah, the attack that they yeah. were. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, exactly. But um, So, you know, possibly there's that. But I don't think it's a particularly good GX attack. I think where it's going to... Well, one, it's, it's just kind of... It's, uh, it's, got, it's got good family in the other Zorak. So I think it could be played because it's got that good support. Yeah. Uh, and also it's, it's, it's good support in itself because of the ability. So it's, it's just a good um consistency boosting card mm. in in a format where i think decks kind of need that consistency being able to draw two cards is really good yeah we've been seeing decks play orange guru whereas previously they wouldn't have so clearly decks are kind of you know an orange guru uh is kind of like not intrinsically that good a card i think it just shows that right now in the format decks will really value uh having abilities on the board that draw them cards yeah uh they, they value it a lot um and obviously Octillery for decks that can play it. You know, decks are really getting a lot of mileage out of that. So I think trade's a really good hmm. ability and you can discard cards that you don't want. So you make yourself more end-proof. You know, just, just discard these garbage cards that you don't want anymore. Yep. The first attack, Riders Beating, so being able to do 20 for each Pokemon in play, is just sort of like a tantalizingly close to being sort of really good attack. I don't know if you sort of feel the same way, but yep. um, no, it's just... like... It's 20 or 30 damage off being really good. Because yep. of course... With no Skyfold in, in, in the format, you're only going to be hitting for 120 base. With a Choice Band, you're hitting for 150, mm-hmm. and that's pretty much in the dead zone. Yep. That's 120 to non-GXs and EXs, and 150 to GXs and EXs is short on both fronts. Yep. A lot of one price attackers actually have more than 120 HP, and basically all GXs and EXs have more than 150. So you're going to need some additional damage, uh, and that damage is going to come from somewhere. You've either yep. got to play... Like, there's a stadium. There's, well, there's a new stadium, and there's Reverse Valley. You can, okay, you get 10 more damage to Dark Pokemon. You've got Kakui, but you sort of can't really rely on that too much. Although, <laughs> you've, got, you've got Trade to make up for the subpar draw, so maybe you can Kakui every turn. I don't know. Uh, and then what else have you got? You can spread with Tabu Koko a, a yep. bit to sort of make up for the damage, but ultimately, it's kind of just not quite a <laughs> good enough attack, I think. So, yeah. 210 HP is quite nice. Weak, weakness to fighting's good because, uh, I mean, it's about well, Siphon Gallade, but. Um, yeah. yeah, so I mean, look, I think I think the other Zorak is a good card in the format now because Dex is so reliant on Lele and Bridget. Mm-hmm. So you're going to get some good damage off Zorak even early on. I think Zorak breaks probably still pretty good at the moment. Yep. Uh, but uh, we haven't really seen much of it because where it was previously used was like Zorak, either Zorak Umbreon or Zorak Dramper. Mm. But Dramper Garb seems to be a better version of, yep. of, of Dramper Zorak. And I think this is probably going to change that. But I think 
if it is, I think we're going to see Zoran either paired with things like Drampa or uh, paired with... I think Umbreon's dead. I don't think Umbreon's coming back. Because no. uh, also, the thing is, uh, well, that I need to mention also with those decks is we've lost the evolutions. Yeah. So you don't have... You can't make yourself fire, lightning, water anymore. Yeah. So the appeal of those kind of like, oh, I can mix Zorak with like Umbreon and, and these sort of things and I can play, you know, Flareon and Jolteon. Well, you can't do that anymore. So you're just stuck with Dark, which is a pretty weak... That's a weak type. Mm. It's actually worse than having no type pretty much because <laughs> Gardevoir is resistant to you. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's sort of a neat little utility card that you'd see played in sort of other Zorak decks. But, I mean, those decks aren't good enough to exist right now. Uh, what would make this card so good that would make people consider Zorak as a deck yeah um, yeah yeah no I think uh, you're pretty much spot on with your analysis of this card uh, the only thing I'll say is that it could be a star and expanded uh, expanded can abuse ah, things yes. like dark patch yes. and skyfield <laughs> and things like that so yeah it could could find its way into expanded no, decks and I, I think agree. it will in sort of the US and Europe yeah expand is a whole different ball game skyfield now you've got a base uh base damage of 180 yep. so now you now you're really talking mm. uh that's a seriously good card expanded yeah uh raichu dx probably not as much to say about this one it's not a fantastic card <laughs> if we get a better scan here oh there we go now that's uh that's a good looking scan but yep. <laughs> yeah powerful spark <laughs> you can play it with magda zone and uh and then you can and then you can just cry when you play against a Garbodor deck yeah. or anything that's semi decent. Twenty damage plus twenty for each of your lightning energy. Even though it's attached to all Pokemon, I mean that's just that's just not very good. Hmm. Like when you actually think about the deck, it might seem like oh, but you know eventually I can scale up. But uh, think about how many energy you need to knock out even like uh, anything. Yeah. Like, how much energy can you need to knock out to knock out a Gardevoir GX? Yeah. I mean that's just impossible. Yeah. You're gonna need ten energy and that's just ridiculous. Uh, or eleven energy. Um, no wait, not ten energy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, wait. No. No. 11 energy or 10 energy choice band. Yeah. Or 9 energy. Actually, no, it's 9 energy choice band. Yeah. Anyway, the point is, it's not a good attack. That's the point of this. Thunder is not particularly good either. 3, 4, and 60 is not good. Doing 30 to yourself is also not good because going from 210 to, to 180 HP is actually like a big jump. Hmm. Um, the GX attack, what do you reckon about that? I'm not a huge fan uh, of it. No, I reckon that's a huge investment for a pretty low damage and paralysis has obviously gotten a lot weaker with Guzma and things around, so especially when people can lay lay for it, it uh, becomes yeah. reasonably easy to get out of Paralysis or even, yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't... Yeah, Voltail GX is supremely underwhelming and it may be one of the worst GX attacks, I think. Ooh, be cool, be yeah. cool. That's an interesting topic. A topic for another day. Yeah. But, uh, yes, it probably would rank up there. Yeah. Uh, well, speaking of GX attacks... Uh, Boy, you cannot read that. Um, <laughs> Let's. Uh, okay, I'll just explain what it is. So Entei, it's got a hundred Entei GX, 180 HP. Obviously, it's a basic fire Pokemon. It's just got a two for 50 attack, which you can see. Uh, then it's got a two fire and a colorless attack for 100 damage, and the defending Pokemon's burned. Now, of course, remember the new burn rules are such that you t you're guaranteed to take that 20 damage. So yeah, you know, you're effectively doing 120 damage straight up. Uh, still not that good. But then you've got Brave Burn GX. So two Fire and a Colossus, as you can see. What it does is 150 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. What do you think about this? Uh, I'm just going to say nope. <laughs> I don't yeah. really like see, it. See, I don't think it's particularly good either. Because, of course, when you're hitting the bench, uh, Volcano and EX can't increase that damage. Yeah. It only increases damage done to the active Pokemon. I think if you could increase damage done to the bench, it uh, would actually be not bad. Yeah. But only hitting for 150, you can't knock out Tapu Lele's. Um, yeah, and Volcanion doesn't really set up really bench knockouts. Stuff, but yeah, Vol Volcanion it's, it's doesn't not, set up bench knockouts with like spread or anything like that, so it doesn't really fit in yeah. with the style of the deck. So yeah, agreed, agreed. So that that probably rivals Raichu's yeah. one of the worst GX attacks. Uh, Mewtwo, how do we feel about this bad boy? And uh, you can this is this is legible this time. Uh, so this is the uh, non-secret rare Mewtwo, if you like. Because uh, of course. Ah yes, other, well, and also we have, of course, um, we have uh, this one as well. Yeah, uh, but they do the same thing. So in any case, they uh, they do do the same thing. So uh, the first attack uh, is for a psychic, thirty times the amount of energy attached to this Pokemon. Uh, pretty bad. Uh, super absorption, sixty damage, heal thirty from this Pokemon. Also not very good. And Psycho Break GX two hundred damage, which is actually not bad. Two hundred damage for three psychics is okay. Uh, with a choice ban, of course, that goes up to 230, so you can one-shot Mewtwo's, but 
overall this card is supremely underwhelming for me uh, you don't really want to be stacking energy onto your active in the format now uh, God of War just punishes you so heavily uh, Tepu Lele can also do a decent amount of damage so before you're hitting like even if you have three energy on this that's going to be doing 90 damage so Tapu Lele with double colors will hit you back for 100 so uh, that's pretty bad uh, super absorption 60 is very underwhelming heal is not too relevant because most things are either one-shotting or two-shotting you and the 30 damage probably is not going to put you outside two-shot range unless you're playing like fighting for your belts and things like that maybe it might help you but uh, against like Galissapod or something like that but uh, overall probably probably not going to be too helpful uh, so yeah my analysis of this card is that uh, it's one for the binder it looks pretty nice but uh, not competitive yeah, that's it's a it does look nice. That looks sick. Yeah, uh, I agree with you on the analysis. I mean, I think maybe uh, decks that already have psychic the compare like maybe I don't know if Lunal or ever becomes a deck again. Hmm. Maybe you want to use this as your GX attack uh, because of course Lunal's GX attack isn't that good anymore because yeah. all the basic Pokemon like because it doesn't work on GX Pokemon. So um. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, it's a good GX attack if yeah. you can move the energy to it. Definitely. Uh, as you say, you can do 230. That's stock out pretty much anything. Well, basically everything except Metagross. Mm. But, yeah, aside from that, it, it would be used as kind of a one-punch yeah. you know, move. You know, say you're playing Lunala. I don't know if this is ever going to become a reasonable deck, but <laughs> let's just say that it does. You can just put this down, move your energy to it, bam, get yeah. 200 damage. You're not going to attack with this ever again. Although, actually... You, you can get one big knockout. Come to think of it, you could actually use this... So you know the counter energy that's coming out? That's all rainbow, isn't it? For two energy. Yeah, yeah, it is. So you... Yeah, I guess you could have this sitting on the bench with like a psychic on it and then just counter and then do 200, actually, 230. Actually, yeah, that's, that's a good point. Other decks might be able to... Yeah, maybe decks that, that have sort of psychic attacks yeah. can make use of it. Like, like Garbodor or something. something like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, Espeon Garb, maybe. Um, so, yeah. and then they probably have to start like counter energy um, <laughs> probably wouldn't otherwise want to do but <laughs> hey just for the look on your opponent's face yeah. man, you've just got this Mewtwo GX sitting with one psychic energy your opponent's like oh what is this scrub yeah. he's not going to be able to power this attacker up and you go bam counter energy hit it for 200 <laughs> and uh, yeah Although, or you could play it with the shining Mew and get two energy cards onto it yeah so you can power it up things. but it's no, just but I mean the thing is just <laughs> Once you attack with it, it's just so underwhelming. Because, yeah. yeah, Slash Strike, you know, good attack. And then, yeah, full burst and super absorption. Just, yeah, just not very good. Yeah. But, yeah, and that's pretty much it for the GX attackers. Oh, no, wait. Pokemon Breeder is the other kind of it's full the, art. The other GX and attacker. we can see it here. <laughs> yeah, it's the other. Exactly, it's the other quality GX attacker, yeah. With the Miltank GX sitting in the background. Uh, this is pretty underwhelming. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Does uh, draw two cards, then heal 20 from your active yep <laughs> yeah so, yeah not much more to say about that uh, neither a yeah. pokemon center lady nor a charon it's like a way it's like kukui except instead of doing 20 extra damage you're healing 20 damage <laughs> yeah i think we can all say safely which which one of those effects is better yeah okay so the regular set um all right well let's just get cracking on this hmm. there's some interesting cards here so latios probably not too much to say about that Breakthrough, it could sort of serve as kind of like a Tabu Coco, you know, just nudge and do some, all right, damage kind of effect, but it doesn't have Fairy Treat and it's not really that good, so yep. uh, probably not going to see any play. Shaman. Uh, an interesting attack. Hmm. Might find it's, well, it's, it's got a sort of a, a consistency attack. Um, maybe, well, maybe that, uh, that attack could be used in... Uh, what am I thinking? Glucibot. Sorry, not Glucibot, sorry. That Genesect deck we're talking about. Yeah. Because you know, with Venus, so you can power it off for one energy. You could do 120 damage for one energy. Um, maybe that could be alright. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably it's probably not great, but 120 damage is, like, good, obviously. Yeah. But uh, it's got a consistency attack, but, yeah, not going to set the world on fire. No. If, if the consistency attack was for free, then you now we're talking. Yeah, now we're talking. But, yeah, uh, now we're talking. For a grass. Yeah, that would have been... It's like, like the old chat up. Chatot G. Yeah, good old Chatot. Yeah. Oh, Chatot. Mimic. Yeah. So. Come back, Chatot. I suppose we have Volpix now, but yeah, no, I think it'd be really good if it had that, but uh, alas, it does not. Nope. Keldeo. Keldeo, this could see play as kind of the, um, uh, as the, how would I put it, the sort of one prize attacker of choice in, uh, well, in, in a number of things, I guess, but I'm thinking kind of 
Lapras, Manaphy kind of water box mm-hmm. decks. Yep. It's like a personal favorite of mine. It's, it's kind of on the fringes of the format. Yeah. Uh, it's not like a long line tells, but it could see play in that, you know, because yeah. it's a two, well, it's two energy attacker and it could do reasonable damage. Yeah. Say your opponent's got, you know, four bench Pokemon, a base of 100 damage, that's pretty good. Yeah. And hitting for two, two energy is good. Uh, it also means, say, like you're going second, your opponent's, you know, Bridgeted for a bunch of bench Pokemon. It's easier to attack with this on the first turn yeah. than it is, say, a Lapras with three energy. It means you just need one less Max Elixir, you know, Aquapatch energy switch. So, and you can, you know, put on genuine pressure because your yeah. opponent's got enough bench Pokemon. Absolutely. So, I think, uh, I think it's a reasonable card. It mm. could see, could see playing that, but yeah. probably not going to see much play outside of that. But it's not bad. No, it's not bad. Uh, okay, what do you think about Evil Tile? But does it remind you of anything? Huh? <laughs> does, does this evil tile remind you of anything? This evil tile. any other evil tile, maybe. Good old yeah. evil tile. Oblivion Wing. Where have, I, where have I heard that before? Oblivion <laughs> Wing. Hmm. Oblivion Wing. And even the artwork's like really similar to the other evil tiles. In that. Uh, yeah. But I guess it's what, how it's different like are you going to make evil tile, something. I guess. But anyway. Yeah, yes. I mean, yeah. Oblivion Wing. It buffed Oblivion Wing. 90 damage. Attach a dark energy from your discard to one of your bench. So... Uh, you know what? I actually don't mind it. I actually don't mind it. Uh, for a dark and a double colorless, and you're getting back a dark energy from your discard pile, it's actually not too bad. 90 is pretty decent. Choice band that up, that's 120, so you're two shotting most things. So I actually don't mind it. Uh, it's a basic, so who knows? You could you could power that up on the second turn. So the format's a lot slower now, so these types of attacks are pretty viable, actually. So. Uh, at first glance, it doesn't seem great, but I think it's actually not too bad. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's okay. Um, it's just a bit sort of costly because I mean you're getting back an energy, but I suppose you're, you know, ideally you're putting a double colorless and a dark in this. You're sort of investing two energy to get mm. one energy. I mean you are doing ninety damage, which is pretty good. Yeah. But um, I think if you can get off two attacks early on, mm. yeah, maybe it's all right. So you can sort of put on pressure, say, but on turn two, or even theoretically turn one with getting elixir off, but. Yeah. Put, put pressure early on while still developing your board but mm. I think dark decks you would probably rather do things a different way maybe just yeah. powering up dark riser or whatever their attacker is but yeah. it's it's not terrible no it's not um, terrible Raikou an interesting uh, very similar this this is now the original Oblivion Wing but for lighting Pokemon <laughs> uh, so they've, they've really run out of ideas here yeah. so yeah look uh, maybe in through some lightning decks that well sorry when I say some lightning decks what lightning decks are even are there? I mean, this... Uh, yeah, I don't really see this. It could be sort of like an alternative to Magnezone in something, but it's... I mean, not really. It's, no, it's not. It doesn't really fulfill so. the same role. Uh, I think, sadly, for Raikou, it uh, just doesn't have the uh, support. You're not really going to play Raikou, Raichu GX, are you? And spend, like, ten hey, turns hey, rolling Thunder. Let's not roll anything out here. But, yeah. Well, also, it's Raikou, so you can't use... It, it eats up into your spots yeah. for, with the other Raikou, so you couldn't play like three of this and three of the other. Yeah. Uh, there's another thing to keep in mind, but I don't think this will see play. Palkia, the less said about that, the better, I think. Marshadow. Now, this this is an interesting card. Uh, what do you reckon? Yeah, so uh, I guess we'll... So its uh, ability goes uh, when you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench, both players shuffle their hand into their decks and draw four, so it's a judge. When you play it down, so yes, it's like Giratina, and even yeah. that's exactly the same ability. So yeah. keeping in with the theme here, yeah, it is Platinum Giratina, the uh, Let Loose. Uh, yeah, Giratina, it's about seven years old, it? all yeah. over. Let Loose. Yeah, Let Loose. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so Platinum is the set. Sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah. uh, yes, um, I don't know how I feel about this card. I don't know. Putting your opponent down to four doesn't seem super strong right now. Um, N is extremely powerful. N is your supporter of choice. And my shadow doesn't really have a great attack. I think if it had a pretty good attack, uh, then the ability would be good in certain situations. But uh, I don't think it's particularly good. Yeah, I think the the, the turn where it'd be really good is if you're going first mm. uh, on your opponent. So, well, particularly if they've mulliganed, but even if they haven't. So, yeah. on average, they'll have six cards in their hand. Uh, you're going first, so you let loose, and now they're down to four uh, before they've you know drawn a card. So, yeah. I think that's probably pretty good and. Reduces the odds that they'll have, you know, Bridget and, and Lele, and even if they do, it reduces the odds that then they have a follow-up supporter. So it's going to make things more awkward for your opponent early on. But the question is, is it worth playing your deck for that? I think you're right in that because of N existing, um, mm. you don't really need the effect for later on because yeah. you can get N to more or less do the same thing. So I think this is more of like an early game disruption yeah. thing. So 
which is probably only really that good if you go first. So if yeah. you go first, it's, it's good, but probably not worth playing yeah. in a deck. And obviously, it uses up a bench space. Most decks can't afford that. Uh, is this resistant to Psychic? I think uh, it's it, is fighting. The... It's fighting. Oh, it's fighting yeah. down. Because I was going to say, is this the first Psychic Pokemon that's resistant to Psychic? No, no. <laughs> Could have set a, set a new uh, a record there. Verizian. Uh, I don't particularly like this card. Really? You reckon? I don't know. I'm, I'm not. I'm not really feeling it. I don't know. I actually don't mind it as a card. Like I think it's easy, easy to overlook Verizian. But uh, a one a one energy attack is pretty good. Thirty damage. Uh, of course, choice man. Yeah, actually, it's 60. No, I think it is pretty good. Um, yeah, getting for sixty. And then you get to can, can yeah, you that. get to accelerate an energy. So uh, I think you'd you'd have to you'd have to make this a focus of your deck. So uh, you'd have to yeah basically start with it grass 30 attach your grass from your hand and then next turn you'll be able to hit 90 30 um or if you're playing genesect then you could move the energy onto genesect and keep keep going like that and just keep chipping away 30 30 uh while accelerating and then putting things onto your genesect i don't know i don't mind it it's not it's not as bad a card as i think people think it is i think 30 damage like a one you can never overlook one energy attacks in my opinion like, yeah, but uh, yeah, no, I think that's fair. And well, I like it in, I suppose, Genesect. Yeah, just getting more energy on the board because, of course, you can move them around with mm. the ability. So, um, yeah, and Pike is. <laughs> I think Pike was first used on that Samurott. I don't know why <laughs> yeah, I remember yeah, this, but I think Pike. What is what is Pike? <laughs> yeah. It's it's like a. Uh, so I'm it's guessing it's some form of like attacking something. Isn't you know, it like a spear? A pike, a pike. Oh, it's a spear. Okay. Some kind of spear. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh well, there you go. I'm, I don't think Virgin so, really has a spear, but so he's, well, he's maybe his head is the spear. Sticking his spear out and hitting the bench. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's how you get that spread damage, but uh, or oh, snipe damage. Yeah. So it could be seen. Zekrom. Gee, this is like yeah. It was Zekrom Reshiram. I think we'll analyze them together. Yep. Uh, this is yeah, pretty much creativity like, these are dead at ringers, its best. Sort of black right. and white. Yep. So outrage is exactly the same. They've got different second attacks. Again. Uh, could, I mean, Reshiram, could, whenever you see a fire basic Pokemon, I mean, my, my instinct is, go, okay, could this fit into a fire deck? Yeah. And I think the resounding answer with this is no, because you're not going to be able to make use of Outrage, and Scorching Breath is like, Baby Volk hits for three for 100 anyway, so it's like, it, it doesn't really serve much purpose. And no. Lightning is just not a good type. You yeah. can't power up Zekrom second attack. Not that it's even that good if you do. Uh, so Zekron Reshiram, don't think there's much to, to say about those. Um, yeah, but well, let's, can, let's just sorry, take a moment to look back at 2011 when Black and White was first released. Zekrom and Reshiram at that time had 130 hit points. We're seeing the exact same cards in 2017. How broken were Hey, they do cards? 130 damage now. They do yeah. 130 damage oh, now. They're sorry, attack. the power creep and they've, really... and they've got an extra retreat cost yeah. as well. Just to, just to really... Uh, yeah, rub salt in the wound, but ugh, we don't even have Pachirisu Shaven yeah, anymore. I know. You can't even do you can't even power up Zekrom that way. But yeah, yeah, it's pretty grim, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, but yeah. I don't think those will see play. But I think we'll leave the best to last. We'll leave Hooper to last. Hmm. Manaphy, uh, I, you could see this as like a tech in yeah again this kind of like water box sort yeah. of decks like, as a way you know we don't have rough seas anymore just as a way of dealing with spread decks. Yeah, the thing is that those decks don't really worry about spread as much because they're say if you you know, my much beloved Lapras water box deck, mm. that doesn't have any evolution, so those kind of like Espeon Devolve spread decks aren't particularly good against it. I mean Necrozma can be a bit of a pain, but it's not like it really struggles with those sort of decks anyway. Yeah. Alola Ninetales decks might uh, worry about that a bit more, so maybe they could benefit out of Manaphy because of um, their vulnerability to devolve mm -hmm. possibly. But Ninetales GX Alola Ninetales GX already has the Ice Path thing, so it's probably not as vulnerable to spread damage. But yeah, uh, if you well, if you don't have enough damage on you for that to get a knockout, Ice Path is actually isn't that good. Like let's just say you've got like eighty spread damage on your nine tails, well, you're doing any damage. But if that any damage isn't relevant, it's not actually that good. But mm -hmm. anyway, the long and short of it is, it might see play in some of those decks. Yeah, uh, it's sort but of probably not. They're tied for bench space. That's the problem. Yeah, you bench know, the nine tails deck yeah. uses every bench space you can get. It plays artillery. It's got Laylies on the bench. It's got multiple, you know. Of Olpixes, is some are playing Tapu Fini. Yeah, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. it's going to be tough to fit Metaphy in your bench, Absolutely. and it's going to be tough to fit in your yeah. list. So I think it's it's one of these cards that's sort of one of those tech cards that has to be really matchup specific. So yeah. if it was a if it if you're playing against a deck 
and healing 20 would put you out of two shot range that's what you'd use manaphy for in those nine tails yes, decks yes. so um that's that's its main utility that i see and i can't really see that anywhere in the format right now most decks um can comfortably even if you heal 20 still get over that that uh barrier and hit the two shot so like yeah maybe maybe galissapod if i hit your nine tails for 120 you heal 20 but then choice band throws that out so yeah i mean i don't really see utility for manaphy at the moment because it's very easy to get around um that sort of a healing 20 to put yourself out of two shot range choice band usually ruins a lot of that math anyway so yeah 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 well even i they wouldn't even need choice band for that would they because they'd hit you for 120 you'd heal down to 100 yeah and then they do so, another 120 yeah. and then they do 120 and so um but yeah that yeah if they're doing like 100 and yeah i don't know 110 110 so which doesn't happen yeah. so but yeah that's that's the utility of manaphy so not going to be played i don't think yeah, keep it in the back of your mind. It could become relevant at some mm. point. But Hooper. Now, I think this is this is a really interesting card. So mm. it's got that scoundrel guard. So much like the safeguard of, that's been, you know, we've seen uh, a lot in the past. And yeah, just preventing all effects of attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon by your opponent's Pokemon GX or EX. So this is this is like a lot of Nine Tails' ability, mm. but it's on a basic, mm. and it's actually got exactly the same attack, but just substituting water yep. for for dark, and it's a basic. And it's got 10 more HP. Mm. So there's a lot to like about this card. And it might be something that's enough that we see... Sorry, that's enough for these Dark decks to, to actually come back into the format. Yep. You know, Because Darkrai... Turbo Dark was sort of a, a deck last season, but but now, particularly because of Gardevoir, mm -hmm. it's sort of fallen off the radar. You know, you're weak to... You're weak to off. This doesn't necessarily actually solve that problem in particular because the problem was, was Gallade, right? Because Gallade yep. one-shots you for, for two energy and it's still one-shots Hooper and also... It's, yeah, so but but just in general, this this would really I think enhance uh, those those dark decks, mm. or even it could be used in a deck of its own. Um, I don't know. So you're not as sold on it? Uh, no, I think it's a really good card, as you said. Uh, I don't think that I can't see it working in dark decks because dark decks usually like to run mono dark without the double colorless. Actually, yeah, so, yeah. So that that's a good point. Yeah. So it's not. It's a bit awkward to yeah, use. It. Yeah. So to put three dark energy on it, it's a bit awkward. And as you said, a lot of decks have an answer to the the one Hooper uh, in the form of Gallade or non EX like Vika Volt or something like that. So, yeah. uh, but I think a quad deck of this might actually actually be of pretty course good. yeah the quad yeah. Hooper yeah uh, yeah so what, that was sort of touted as like a quad alone nine tails people sort of well I think some people are kind of playing that actually yeah or sort of decks that aren't quite quad alone nine yeah. tails but they have a strong alone nine tails focus mm -hmm. yeah uh, we could see something like that with Hooper yeah yeah but uh, obviously Hooper uh, a bit easier because it's basic so it's uh, a little bit yeah. easier to spam than quad alone or nine tails because of course you need the Vulpix and the nine tails to be able to get more like your fifth or sixth nine tails out so uh, that opens up opportunities for your opponent to knock them out before they get into nine tails so whereas hooper you don't really have that problem so i think yeah i don't know i think it could could see play it, it would obviously be very meta dependent uh and you'd have to wait for the right time for the for the format to align to be able to play this sort of quad hooper deck but i think it's something to keep keep in mind but unfortunately i think at the moment it just doesn't have a great partner and to be fair, the best partner might even be that evil tile that's sitting above it with the Oblivion <laughs> Wing and the Strafe. Uh, we just, found the partner. Yeah, we found the partner already. Yeah, just to keep uh, keep it down to one prize attackers the whole time. Uh, basics as well. So, look, simple decks like that shouldn't be underestimated. Uh, the format can be a little bit clunky. Decks can definitely clunk out. So, a simple deck like that could overrun you. Uh, yeah, Fighting Fury Belt can bump your hp up choice band bumps your attack up so eh, who knows could find its way in but i just think unfortunately dark at the moment is just not as strong as it has been in the past so uh again could find its way into expanded decks um just as that last wall that nobody can get over uh so yeah that's my analysis yeah interesting <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, the only problem is with Expanded is we have good old Hex Maniac. True that. Uh, which would probably reduce its... Well, and even things like mm -hmm. Silent Lab, which would reduce its effectiveness, yep. I think. But yeah, I think, you, I think you're right. I think if you're going to play in this format, you probably want to take a quad approach or like a really strong 
safeguard, just grind your way to a victory yeah. approach. Actually, yeah, I, revising my what I said earlier, I don't think this is going to work in Dark Red X. Yeah, because you need double colors for it to be an efficient attacker, mm. and it's sort of playing it alongside other attackers dilutes the whole focus of just trying to safeguard your way to a victory. Because yeah. I think, you know, a lot of decks, okay, fine, they might have one or two attackers, because that's the whole appeal of these sort of safeguard decks, right? Yeah. You know, imagine even all the way back to those good old quad sigil of decks yeah. from a long time ago, but I think that was kind of like the first kind of like quad safeguard type deck yeah. and, um, that sort of set the blueprint of just this idea of, okay, you know, you might have a way of knocking out like a few hoopers, right? Mm. You could even knock out, be able to knock out five hoopers, but if you just, if you, if you can't knock out the sixth hooper, yeah. You know, you just if you just run out, yeah. which probably is going to inevitably happen in a lot of matchups, mm. you can't win. Yeah. So, I mean, I suppose, well, in order to sort of think about, it, I suppose, so let's just run deck through deck by deck, right? Okay, Gardevoir has all it has is Gallade. Yeah. The question is, can you swarm Gallades enough? Uh, yeah. Against the Gallades enough, or, or just like, do they only need to get two Gallades to rip through your entire yeah. board? Or it's sort of it's it's it, that's a tough one. Yeah. What about say, you know, Vicar Bullet has Vicar Volts, mm. sort of. And the problem with a lot of these cards is that Hooper can't one-shot them. Yeah, so that's like a one Vicar Vault is going to run through two Hoopers, mm. um, guaranteed. Even if you're, you know, even if you're still using Super Cybot every turn. Yeah. So that's a problem. Um, even like Metagross can attack with Metang, yeah. and Metang has 90 HP, which is more than Super <laughs> Cybot does. Yeah. Like even stuff like that. So it's going to be, I think, borderline. But there are some decks that are going to have real trouble with just a, a quad Hooper deck. Yeah. I think there are some decks that would just fold yeah. right up, would just straight up fold. Yeah. Um, so. And you've also got to, uh, you do have Garbatox to worry about as well. Yeah. But I guess yeah, you could play yeah. Fighting Fury Belt to knock out the Matang and uh, We found a way to beat Matang, yeah. but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I think. <laughs> but um, yeah, look, it's that's something we'll have to work out. And is there a way that you can deal with those evolutions? Yeah. I mean, even like Potown maybe could yeah. be enough. Like, no, you're right. Potown is definitely a very strong card at the moment. So yeah, uh, and it might just put things into that ideal range. So if you think that uh, Gallade has 150. If they had to evolve up through Curlia, then they'll have done 60 to themselves, and with a Fury Belt, you can do the not remaining 90. So, uh, of course, that might not happen. They might just get Rare Candy Gallade. And yeah, or Field Blast. So it's, it's a bit sort yeah. of, yeah, you, everything kind of has to go right for you. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think it's something to keep an eye out for. Um, all right, onto the Grass Pokemon. We've already covered Venusaur. Uh, not too much to say about that anymore, because we've sort of covered that. But Breloom is <laughs> not a particularly good attack, unfortunately. Nope. Uh, Carnivine could be sort of like an annoying. We've had, uh, we've had a again, keeping with the theme. Carnivines. I swear we've had. <laughs> I swear we've had this like exact attack on a Carnivine before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you reckon? I, I mean, I don't think it's going to be do anything. What about with that? Isn't there that Pokemon that's like if you retreat, you get poisoned again? Oh like yeah. You could, yeah. Well, actually, but that doesn't really necessarily have synergy with this because, uh, I mean. Yeah, I don't think this is very good. <laughs> and anything you want to say quickly? No, nope, no, nope. we can. Yeah, I that think one. that is uh, not very good. Onto the fire poke one. Uh, yeah, again, not not very good. Incineroar. Profane uh, punch. Why didn't they call it propane punch? <laughs> well, actually, there's a story about. Uh, it was originally called goddamn. Yeah, punch. goddamn punch. Yeah, so. Ah, so there, there you go. go. Bit, profane, bit of trivia there. Profanity. Um. Yeah, so two for one thirty if you've got a damage bench, yeah. or you could just use Dramper instead. Yeah. Uh, but I suppose it's a hundred. It's got one hundred seventy HP for a one prize attacker. You know, to be fair, that's pretty good. But one hundred thirty damage just is not quite enough on the stage. Uh, because too, you know, with the yeah. choice band, you're still only hitting for one sixty, yeah. and you're gonna have to find a way to keep powering these these guys up. Yep, uh, it's not quite sustainable. Torkoal is not good at all. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it, you know, it's a good card in pre-release. I mean, yeah. like draft. High pressure heat. You could actually put on, you, know, you could really tighten the screws with that. <laughs> but in standard, it's going to be pretty substandard. Yeah. I think Volcarona, I swear like there's always one of these abilities. Mm. On like, there's always this mediocre card with this exact ability in the format. It's like, oh, you can gust your opponent's active Pokemon, but they can just choose what to send up and it, it's not. Really. <laughs> yeah. Like, just play escape rope if you want that effect yep. not that most decks even want that effect it's not particularly good uh, anything you want to say nope. about our good old fire pokemon the water pokemon don't really do much more no nope. I'm always excited I like the when art I see on an ability on a stage one like yes Krokinor. same same I'm... I'm also excited and actually to be fair it is a good ability yeah. I think but 
great, you can move all your energy to Crocodile, then you evolve to Feraligator and you go, you announce confidently Hydro Splash, <laughs> and your opponent just knocks you out yeah. and you go, well, I've lost the game. Yep. So, yeah, that's just really not very good. Yeah. I, I wish we had this a good Feraligator again, but yeah, yeah it's a neat ability on Crocodile. Again, some really good artwork, I'm mm. really liking some of that. Uh, Floatzel, boy, that is... Hmm. Quillfish yeah, 2 for 70 maybe if there's a deck that already has like like I can imagine say it's a I don't know some deck that already puts in special conditions and they want like a fire counter although well, how are you going to power this up that's <laughs> no, rubbish Aquapatch absolute rubbish well, <laughs> sorry Aquapatch then you need, need Aquapatch as well Electrode 60 for 1 and you, you don't have to worry about any effects, hmm. uh, which means you can't even abuse weakness, which I think would be the only reason to use this card. Like, in a deck that plays Rainbow Energy, if, if you, you know, you're, there's something that you can't beat that's weak to Lightning, you know, with yeah. this with a Choice Band, aha, you know, I found a perfect counter, except yeah. that it doesn't apply weakness, and it is therefore pretty much useless. Uh, plus all... Actually, 60 damage for one, hmm. on a basic. That's pretty that's, good. That, that could be used in some things, 90, like early pressure. You, choice you can do that... Yeah, exactly. You can do that on the first turn, so... Yeah, you can just bridge it that's, and yeah. attach a lightning and smack and hit 60 and start knocking out basics. Yeah, that's not bad. That's actually not bad. Even, um... Yeah. Uh, it's it's not... You just KO their Alolan we'll Vulpix that. before they can beat Yeah, exactly. Him. And 60 damage against a lot of decks early yeah. on. That's really good. You're knocking out Vulpix. Again, as we're talking about, you're knocking out things like Rolds, Beldum. Uh, unfortunately, you're just 10 short to knock you out uh, Trubbish, but now you can find a Fury Belt to knock that out. So you, you're going to be putting on a lot of pressure mm. against a lot of decks. Yeah. Uh, if I wouldn't be surprised to see this, yep. actually. Yep. Just come up in something. The, the question is what? Because the problem is you have to use Lightning, so that's one of the things that probably holds it back. Onto the Psychic Pokemon. Oh, Golok. Remember that good Golok, the one that was like... Uh, could be could be fighting as well as psychic. Yep. Well, we've come a long way since then. The original dual and, type. Yeah, exactly. The original, exactly. The original dual type, and you could use a focus edge. Yeah. Uh, well, it's got it's got an attack with the name of the Pokemon in it. That's probably an indicator that it's not very good. <laughs> yeah. Cooler. Arbok is Arbok, uh, The ability is pretty good hmm. in and of itself, but uh, it's just, jeez, Jinx. Maybe as a disruption card, there's some way of making use of this. Um, no. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe with like uh, delinquent and uh, delinquent Torment and Spirit. the let loose Marsh Shadow <laughs> or red card. So you, you Marsh Shadow, uh, yeah. delinquent, Jinx, bam, gone. Down to zero cards. Yeah. Good night. Top deck sick. I mean, alternatively, you could play Torment Spray as well instead to to get rid of the last card if it's a sport a bit. I don't know, Feverish Kiss isn't bad either, but I don't think we'll see this played much. But I, I, I'm a sucker for those, like, disruption kind of decks. Mm. Not that, none of them have been good for a while, particularly. Um, Stunfisk. Why is yeah, this even in this set? That. <laughs> Shining Legends. Stunfisk. I don't know, it doesn't even look like it knows why <laughs> it's in this set. Yeah, the Stunfisk is lost, I think. It doesn't really know what it's doing here. Yeah, uh, Yeah, it's not Shining. Yeah, he's confused. It's just flapping on the beach. It is, it's very confused. Scrafty, you can knock out basic Pokemon with it, but the, by the time you get out Scrafty, your opponent's probably also got time to get the, out their Pokemon, mm -hmm. evolve Pokemon, so. Yeesh. Uh, Leopard, no. Nice art, though. Mm. Um, Spiritomb. Look, yeah, um, one other thing I'm a sucker for is these kind of, like, preventing retreat <laughs> Pokemon. Like, you know, maybe if there's something that you can, like, lock active yep. you know possibly because you can spread damage to the bench with spirit tomb so maybe you could lock something active and spread to the bench and okay sure your opponent can guzma but you know th they're going to run out of guzma and a lot of decks don't play that many so say you're playing against a gardevoir deck hmm. for instance and they've used up their guzma you can guzma up their artillery or or whatever and you know just curse drop yeah and for days. you could basically just win the game you've well, basically won the game there and you know that's that's pretty powerful yeah. so it's something that you could see played up. I mean, the problem is that it's annoying that Lele is a good attacker in and of itself, so yeah. Lele's not really a target for this. So, I mean, I think cards like Octillery, I mean, the problem is even Own Guru can attack. Mm. Uh, you need to lock up something that just can't attack. You need to lock and up the main one. <laughs> and Octillery alone. And Octillery, uh, yeah, I'm struggling <laughs> to think of other. Yeah, and even things like, what are other bench sitters? Things like, even Vicavolt, that can fend for itself. Yeah. You know, damn, these these Pokemon can fend for themselves. Yeah. But yeah, okay. It's it's an Octillery counter. Let's just leave it at that. But 
uh, it's it's kind of a neat thing preventing your opponent from retreating. There's always kind of mm. ideas you can come up with, but uh, probably not going to be. Yeah, probably going to be too impactful. Nope. This is Zorua. Oh, of course, because we had Zorak. Um, is that no? That's worse than the other Zorua yeah. because it can't confuse. Yep. Do not play that Zorua. What is going on in that picture? Yeah, I'm trying to work that out as well. Uh, there's a Zorak. There's another there Zorua. The I think right. it, oh no, that's a Zorak in yeah. the bottom right. I think. Yeah. So it's like this mum slash dad. Right. Yeah, I can't pick uh, pick the gender of Z- Zoroks. Nope. Yeah. It's not a skill that I have, don't know about you, but... Um, Alright. And I think that is, th- that is the end of it. Yeah. Uh, uh, you, we, get we'll, we'll energy, some... the, uh, you get warp energy. As the... You get warp energy back. Oh, warp energy, yes. And so for those who don't know what it does, I think this is an exact reprint mm-hmm. of, the, of the old warp energy. When you attach it to your active Pokemon, you just switch it with one of your bench Pokemon. And... Yeah, I think... Th- does this mean we can use the old warp energy? Uh, I think it does. Yeah, it's pretty much an exact reprint. So yeah, I'm pretty sure old warp energy was the same, read the same. So yeah. Wow, awesome. Uh, and I've just noticed another damage mover. Hmm. I'd never seen that before. Okay. I think that's new in this set. So uh, old damage mover. It's an item card. Let's you move three damage counters uh, from one of your Pokemon to another one of your Pokemon. So, yeah. I, this is a really niche card. It would need to be in like a uh, some deck that makes use of damage moving. Yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah. I can't think of sort of. I don't know. Maybe Potown with I don't know. Trampered. <laughs> it doesn't really. There's no real need to, to play that. Yeah, it it'll probably be some really niche deck where like you need damage on the bench and you sort of. But there's always probably better ways of doing dealing damage. Because how do you move the damage? We've got to get the damage somewhere, right? Mm. So it's like, how do you even get the damage in the first place? Well, you'd have to play like Potan or Rainbow Energy. In which case, why do you even need to move the damage? <laughs> probably, I don't know. Well, maybe, actually, <laughs> maybe you, you use, say with Drampa, right? You can attach a Rainbow and a DC to Drampa. Then you can move the dam- the Rainbow damage off Drampa to the bench. Bam, there you go. Well, Who needs Potan? Definitely uh, worth the inclusion. Yeah, that's do not play that because of course one of the benefits of Potown is, is it's an offensive card as well. It's not just for setting up your own damage. So basically, I can't think of a, a way to use this card. <laughs> uh, what about Warp Energy? Do you see like a, a usage of that in the format? I'm struggling to come up nah, with. No, I can't see an application for Warp at the moment. Like just just colorless energy in general aren't really usable. I think oh, it's just straight colorless yeah. energy. I can't think of. They're, uh, yeah, they're much stronger switching effects now. Than they used to be in Pokemon. Them you don't have as many like bad Pokemon as you used to, I guess. So like, so in the past, if someone like bright looked your Claydol or something, you could attach a warp to get it back or something like that. But I don't know if anyone actually did that. But anyway, you'd usually just play Warp Point or something. I don't yeah, know. sometimes or even Undin Q yeah, or yeah, Undin Q something like that. But those are the days. But, but now you don't really yeah, have think... those kinds of things. You have Float Stones. You have like yeah. Um, powerful attackers like Tapu Lele which we only have one retreat so short answer is no I cannot see how warp energy is good in any context apart from maybe something like I was going to say like Volcanion or something like that where like you attack and then you need to switch back out but I mean well, Volcanion is way better switching cards than that or can just pay the retreat yeah. so yeah because you've got to actually attach the energy that's yeah. sort of the problem like if you've attacked with Volcanion, you don't want to be attaching a fourth energy yeah. to it. Like, that's just as bad as wasting, an, like, energy retreating. Yeah. But, you know, it's sort of... It, yeah, I agree. It doesn't really... You know, it looks pretty, but I don't think it's going to really be seen. Yeah. Because, yeah, you're right. We have so many good switching cards in the format. You know, obviously, we've got Floatstone and Guzma. I mean, even to the point where nowadays, we basically don't see even cards like Switch used yeah. anymore just because of Guzma and Floatstone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, and switch is a superior card to warp energy in pretty much all situations yeah it's got to be it would be a, again a really sort of niche deck that like wants to promote something like that has just a, an ability that yeah. works when it's in the active yeah like chandelure but, but that or also, something like that yeah yeah exactly something like that but that also would make use of the energy because mm. if you're not making use of the energy well then you just rather play switch yeah. so yeah I think most decks even can't really make use of single colors energies that well if you sort of look at the format right now basically every deck either wants to use like specific basic energy or double colors mm. Uh, for for a variety of reasons, um, so but it's a niche card that could uh, possibly see use at some point. There's the alternate art for Pokemon Breeder. Mm. I, I, good art again, I think. Yep. Yep. Good art all around. Yep. What, what did you say is the favorite artwork of this set? My favorite artwork of the entire set. 
the entire set. I'm putting you on the spot here. Uh, I'm going to have to go with that uh, Shining Mew. That, yeah. that thing. Oh, Shining Mew. Beautiful. Yeah, I'm going to go with Mewtwo GX, uh, this this one here. I just think that looks really cool, but... I mean, there's there's lots of good ones. Uh, yeah, Shining well, Mew looks awesome as you're well. You're wrong, Roland, so... Uh, let's, uh, no, I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Shining Ho also is a favourite of mine. That looks pretty sweet. Yeah, but I will, yeah, can't say no, though. I will definitely be trying that Volcanion on PTCGO. Bad Deck Monday, here we come. Shining Volcanion? Yeah. Alright, get around it. Bad Deck <laughs> Monday. It's making a return. Yeah. Oh, of course, yeah, or, or other weekday derivative uh, to avoid copyright issues, but uh, yeah. Awesome. Uh, any last words uh, about the set? Nope. So, Anything? I think, in summary, this set has a lot of interesting cards, which may have potential, but there are no immediate format breaking cards in this set yeah that's what i yep, think yeah i 100 agree yeah yeah but uh it's been it's been a nice sojourn into the uh shining legends mm. set yep and yeah all right good stuff thanks well join us for our next video whenever that is yep. but uh hope you've hope you've had a good time listening to this and yeah join us for our next video Bye. Tube signing off